Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial in Logic Pro 10 on how to use filters creatively. So I'm going to show you guys how to uh, write in filter automation uh, to create sort of gradual um, changes and dynamics in your synthesizers, um, as well as how to use um, filters in a way so you can uh, maybe cr create something that's a little bit more dynamic, like pull the high end out, pull the low end out to not just change the song um, uh, from a like a chord standpoint, but actually change it from like a tonal standpoint, from a textural standpoint. So let me play uh, this track I've got here. You'll probably recognize it because it's the basis for uh, the intro music I currently have. All right, so um, when this pulsing synth comes in, it just sort of immediately comes in full brightness. It doesn't really have like a uh, like a noticeable like filter sweep on it. Now we could do a filter sweep from within the ES2 instrument, um, but I want the sweep to sort of come after all of the effects that I have on this uh, instrument's channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, the channel EQ to uh, right to the track, the last thing in line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my um, high pass or my low pass filter rather. Remember that a high pass filter is a filter that allows highs but cuts lows. A low pass filter like this one's one that allows lows but cuts highs. So we're allowing the lows through but cutting the highs. So let's start maybe down here somewhere about 300 hertz. Um, let's maybe make the slope a little bit more. Uh, a little less gradual. Let's see what that just that sounds like by itself. Okay, so we don't want it to be like that forever. We want it to sort. Of, we want this this um, this pulsing sound to sort of like grow and evolve. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, this value right here. This is the um, the cutoff frequency. We're gonna take that cutoff frequency and we're gonna use automation to sweep it upward. So let's go back to about three hundred where we were before. I'm going to hit A to bring up automation on this track. Make sure that we are in read mode. And under the uh, automation options, we're going to go to that uh, channel EQ. It's the, the the last EQ in line there. There was another one up there, uh, but that was that's, that's this one. So they are in order here. And we're going to choose the, uh, they call it high cut, but it's really a low pass filter, but we'll say high cut frequency. And we'll see that our starting frequency is 305 hertz. And we'll click somewhere just to create a little automation point. Click over here to create another one. And we will pull this up to full range. Hit A to um, hide automation. I'm going to pull up the uh, channel EQ one more time just so you can see this happening. Let's see what this sounds like. Now, if you, if you don't want it to sort of move that fast, if you want it to sort of like stay filtered in the beginning and like do more movement at the end, what you can do is you can grab your automation curve tool and you can create sort of like a um, exponential or logarithmic shape. And there's also S, different S curve shapes as well, but I'm gonna try this one. I wanna see more growth at the end, not at the beginning.
All right, and then for the middle section here, um, I'm going to uh, play with the filter a bit more. So I'm just going to create an automation point just as sort of like a, um, a couple automation points is sort of like a, a pivot point, if you will. And at the very beginning here, I'm going to drop this down to 300 like we did before, 305. There we go. If I can get it right on 305, there we go. And then um, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to um, create sort of like this arcing filter sweep for this whole section. So let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so on this one, instead of having it just the filter just sort of fade in, let's make the filter fade in, but let's also make it fade down. So let's make it start at full range, and then we'll arc it down sort of kind of quickly. So we'll do something like, like that. going to try pulling this over a bit more. Let's see what that sounds like. Now, another thing I want to do is for this middle section, just because it's not really like the drop beat. It's sort of like maybe like a verse or something. Maybe some vocals are going to go over this. So I want the drums to be a little bit more tame here. Um, one thing we can do is we can um, use a filter to sort of tame up the drums here. Um, currently, I have all the drums on a, a track stack. So I'm just going to hide the track stack and throw it up top here. And then what I'll do is on the track stack... Uh, I will add our channel EQ again. And this time, just for this little verse section, I'm going to maybe pull out some of the high end just so it's not so um, it's not so in your face. So we're talking about bar 31 through it uh, looks like bar 46. And what we're going to do with our um, channel EQ, is we are going to, first I'm going to get rid of all these other bands here, turn those off. And then I'm going to turn on the low pass filter and pull down our cutoff frequency and shelf a bit. And by the way, it's not a requirement to pull the other bands out. It's just a habit of mine. Let me just zoom in here a bit. And then what I'll do is um, we will pull up automation on this track. Let's view the channel EQ. We use the high cut frequency. And right here, right where those drums start, I'm going to create two points. And right where the drums are supposed to sort of come back into the little drop beat, I'm going to make it a little longer, just so it's a little more gradual here. And then I'm going to grab this little middle line, pull straight down. Now, the other sections here, I want these to be full range, so I don't want to pull those down. There we go. So let's see what that sounds like. Probably a bit too much. Let's pull it up, and you can hear the reverb in the, in the background is getting um, it's it's the reverb sounding weird because the reverb is full range, but the uh, the drums aren't actually full range. I 
kind of like that little sweep there. Let me try that again right here as sort of like a musical effect. Let's see, how long did that go for? It was roughly until... I tell you what, let's snap our automation. Just choose snap automation. And then I can actually snap these points directly to the grid lines. Although I have to have my grid set to something other than a bar, we'll say division. There we go. That's kind of a cool that's kind of a cool little effect. Let's uh let's do that. I'm gonna use my automation select tool. Grab just that. Then I'm gonna hold option and drag this over. There we go. I'm gonna do that every four bars. Just as like a musical effect. And I'm just gonna snap, make sure the automation points are actually snapped. To the grid like they're supposed to be. This one's a little off. Here we go. And the last one. Now this has got sort of like this little scoop in it, um, this little rise in it rather I should call it. Um, I don't know if that's what I want but we'll try it out. Let me try the automation curve tool and pull these down a bit. Let me emulate that over here as well with this Little rise here. There we go. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, it's kind of a cool effect. The only thing I don't like about it is that the um, um, some of the drums, like the the ha the hi hats and the ride and the snare, that's the brighter instruments. Um, they just don't. They sound kind of weird. The kick sounds cool with it. Um, what I'm going to do to compensate for that is I'm going to blend a dry signal of the bright instruments with the the filtered signal on the uh, the drum bus or the drum stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an aux track or uh, a send off of all these four instruments. I'll make it go to bus five. Pull it up just a little bit. And then I'll take um, the aux track that it created over here. I'm gonna call this uh, drums dry. And this is just gonna be to preserve the high end a little bit during that section. Let me just solo these out. What I'm going to do on these is I'm going to make them pre-fader. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can listen to that aux track separately, even with all these muted. Or even with all those sol uh, not soloed, I should say. So yeah, here's just our dry signal. And that's just to preserve some of the high end uh, that the filter is taking out a little bit more gradually. Um, all right. So let's listen to that one more time. Let me just hear what that sounds like with everything in. Um, likewise, you could try this with uh, high pass filters as well to cut the low end out. Um, if you wanted to make something sound a little scooped or a little filtered sounding, um, you know, for instance, if I wanted my um, my second verse or something over here to sound like it was really sort of filtered in the high end and didn't have any bass, and then then you want the bass to sort of drop for like an effect, uh, we could do that. Um, let's actually try that on the um, the second one here on our soft pulse. Um, synth, the one that we automated, uh, drew in all that um, high-end automation. Let's draw in some low-end automation too. So let's turn on the high-pass filter this time. 
uh, which they're going to call it the low uh, cut frequency. There you go. And let's try to gradually cut out the low end now. Now you don't want these to get too close to each other because then you end up having them cross each other and then you've basically canceled out most of your signal. Um, I just want to sort of scoop out the low end toward the tail end of this section so that when the bass hits, um, it's really, really intentional sounding. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is something I do a lot uh, with instruments just to give them some dynamics um, that maybe just playing with the notes can't do or playing with volume can't do. You play with the filters to make things warmer, make things brighter, make things uh, darker, rounder, whatever sort of tone you're looking for. And it sort of affects the, the texture and the timbre of the song um, rather than just focusing so much on notes and beats and chords and things like that. Now we can focus on texture and timbre, um, some other, you know, some other ideas that a lot of songwriters forget about uh, when they compose. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you really, really would like to support the channel, go to patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy and leave a monthly contribution so we can keep um, creating these videos for you guys on a daily basis. Uh, so thanks again and thanks for watching.